so hello everyone uh, today i'll be discussing about acute coronary syndrome that is acs so it, acs is a manifestation of coronary heart disease okay it is a manifestation of coronary heart disease and usually it is a, uh, it is caused by as a result of plaque disruption in the coronary arteries that is atherosclerosis formation is there atherosclerosis is the accumulation of lipids fibrous elements and uh, fibrous elements and uh, calcification in the large arteries which results in the narrowing of the uh, arteries and uh, activation of inflammatory pathways okay so calcification is nothing but build up of calcium in the body like uh, there are two types of calcification the first one is a uh, a uh, dystrophic calcification the second one is metastatic so dystrophic uh, is uh, calcification uh, results from uh, uh, accumulation of calcium in the injured uh, i mean tissues okay and uh, metastatic is the uh, accumulation of calcium in the normal tissues fine so uh, as a result like there is reduced blood flow to the parts of the heart mus muscle and which results in secondary to the plaque rupture and there is a formation of rhombus thrombus and uh, uh, which results in the like for, first it results in the ischemia and further infraction of the that part of the heart okay so now coming to the types uh, there the first type is unstable angina which causes a chest pain so plaque uh, there is plaque uh, build up in the artery there is the it is unstable angina is caused when there is a plaque build up in the artery and uh, there is a partial rupture in the artery like you can see in the fit, figure there is a partial rupture in the arteries and uh, the blood flow will not be uh, like accurate and the second one is stemi uh, st elevated uh, myocardial infraction which is also called as classic heart attack okay and which occurs when ruptured plaque completely blocks the major coronary arteries there is there is a extensive heart damage in the stemi like you can see there is a major block and uh, st is elevated so the next one is non stmi uh, non st uh, ele segment elevated myocardial infraction which is a intermediate form of acute coronary syndrome which which is uh, which causes less extensive damage to the heart so uh, you can see there is a st depression over here okay and the primary goal of the primary goals for the treatment of acs is the reduction in amount of myocardial necrosis the tissue damage that occurs in patient with acute myocardial infraction which uh, so preserving the lv function and uh, we should preserve the lv function the treatment goal should be that and preventing heart failure and limiting other cardiovascular complications okay so now coming to the treatment flow chart and the first thing is we need to check for the symptoms suggestive of ischemia or infraction in the newly diagnosed patient like patient comes in the emergency department or the patient is having a symptoms like uh, chest pain chest discomfort and um, you know like uh, shortness of breath sweating and all so we need to check for the symptoms suggestive of the ischemia or infraction okay so prior this is this thing is prior the hospital administration that is emergency um, uh, this one assessment ems assessment uh, or hospital preparation like before admission admission of the patient okay uh, emergency medical service assessment so monitor uh, monitor or support abc airway uh, airway breathing circulation should be monitored and preparation to provide the cpr should be done okay if the patient comes with the chest discomfort and all and this is the prior to the hospital administration so in that uh, we can also consider the ad admission of uh, sorry administration of aspirin also consider oxygen nitroglycerin or morphine i'll come to that later on and the third one is obtain 12 uh, lead ecg uh, like uh, there is like 12 lead ecg is there the in a uh, 12 lead ecg there is like 10 electrodes which is placed accordingly in uh, and ecg is taken okay so if st elevation is found in the ecg then uh, the hospital should be alerted that the patient is having st emi okay so now coming to the uh, emergency department assessment this should be done within 10 minutes within the time frame of 10 minutes like if it's delayed then the patient might collapse so we need to first check for the vitals oxygen saturation establish a ivss okay cannula and uh, physical examination needs to be done like you need to check for the all the uh, you know bp and all this stuff and checks sri uh, chest x ray needs to be done and review fibrinolytic checklist like check for the contraindication now like fibrinolytic checklist is the first step is patient has first step we need to check is if the patient has chest discomfort okay that is 
for more than 15 minutes in the time frame of a one day like 24 hours if there is more than 15 minutes test, uh, chest discomfort then going for the e and after taking the ecg if the ecg shows the stmi or l BBB. What is this is? It's a left bundle branch block, like conduction delay uh, is seen. Like normally how the conduction takes place, the impulses goes uh, simultaneously to both of the right uh, arteries and the, sorry, right ventricles and the left ventricles, right? So in the LBBB, the, the, there is conduction delay and the most, uh, mostly the impulses travel first to the right uh, ventricles. Okay, so uh, that we need to uh, see if the ECG uh, if the ECG shows STMI or LVVV, then there is increased risk, and we should consider PCI. Now coming to the coronary arteries, there are like two main coronary arteries. The first one is right coronary artery, and the second one is left main coronary artery. Okay. And the subtype of, of left main coronary artery is LAD, that is left anterior descending artery, coronary artery, and left circumflex artery. Okay, so these things we need to monitor. Uh, like uh, angiogra angiogram is done if in the serious patient, uh, serious patients, serious patient if there is increased risk, then angiogram is done. Angiogram is medical. Uh, this is uh, like uh, what do you say? It's a imaging, medical imaging. Okay. But we need to know the difference of this. Normally, we get confused in this thing. This is an imaging procedure. This is like a diagnostic procedure. And this is the procedure, main procedure, stenting. Okay. So, in angiogram, if we'll, uh, if they will see there is a block in any of these arteries, then we go for the stenting procedure. Okay. Right. Which, uh, which will uh, help to, you know, like, uh, surpass the, like, more blood flow in the arteries and all. Right. And... Uh, so revascularization needs to be done that is restoration of the blood flow and pci or cavg pci is a, like non in this pci is angioplasty okay and cavg is a coronary artery bypass sur a graft surgery this is a surgical method and this is a invasive method non invasive method sorry yeah so uh, yeah where was it Furonolytic checklist, yeah. Check for the contraindications, okay. And obtain in this is in the emergency department in the uh, less uh, more, in the time frame of ten minutes, okay. So obtain initial cardiac marker level. So what are the cardiac markers? Uh -huh, myoglobin, yeah. Uh, troponin, uh, cardiac troponin, and then CKMB that is a subtype of creatine kinase, and myoglobin is there. So check for the opt in the initial cardiac marker levels. Okay, yeah, myoglobin. And uh, now coming to immediate uh, emergency department treatment. This is a concurrent one, and this is a immediate. Okay. So for the immediate one, we need to check if the oxygen saturation level is less than ninety two percent. If the oxygen saturation level is less than ninety two percent, then you start with oxygen at four liter per minute and titrate accordingly. Okay, according to the um, patient situation. And the drug, first drug to start is aspirin, 160 to 325 mg, if not given in the emergency medical service department. If, if it's given here, then it's not required because we know, we know the aspirin uh, uh, T half life is 15 to 20 minutes. So we need to monitor that thing. Okay. And the second drug is nitroglycerin, which is like uh, we can give sublingual or as in spray, sublingual 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 mg and spray being 1 to 2 spray we can give. And uh, in IV, there is 5 to 10 minutes MCC per minute, okay? And uh, now the third one being morphine. Morphine, if the patient is not being relieved by these two things, then morphine is given. That is IV 2 to 4 mg, okay? Yeah. Now, now come after this, after the third thing, uh, now we'll come to the ECG interpretation. So, Starting with the first interpretation, that is ST elevation or uh, new LBBV, I told, left bundle branch block. Uh, if it is strongly suspicious for injury, then we need to start with adjunctive uh, therapies. Like we need to start with the nitroglycerin, heparin, consider all these drugs. I'll explain after something. And do not delay reperfusion. We should not, if the patient is like having a high risk, then do not delay the revascularization. Okay. And the time from onset of symptoms, if the onset of symptoms is less than or uh, like within the 12 hours, then we need to go for the reperfusion uh, goals and uh, like PCI and all. And if it is for more than uh, 12 hours, then we need to follow this. I'll explain after some time. So fibrin lytics, we, we can also give the fibrin. We need to check for the fibrin lysis things and all. And then if uh, fibrin lytics, we can uh, administer tenecteplase, IV. This is according to the, uh, what do we say, weight. 
ओके अकॉर्डिंग टू द वेट इफ द पेशेंट इज लेस देन सिक्सटी के जी देन वी नीड टू एडमिस्टर थर्टी एम जी इफ बिटवीन सिक्सटी टू सेवेंटी के जी थर्टी फाइव एम जी इफ लाइक इंक्रीजिंग वे लाइक इन सेवेंटी टू एटी के जी दैन इट शुड बी एन फोर्टी लाइक अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट एंड अल्टीप्लेस कैन बी गिवन आई वी दैट इज लेस देन और मोर देन लाइक एनी थिंग इज फाइन सिक्सटी सेवन के जी देन फिफ्टीन एम जी ओवर वन टू टू मिनट्स ओके सो ना कंडीशन सेकेंड इस इज इंटरप्रिटेशन इज एस टी डिप्रेशन और डायनेमिक टी वेव इन्वर्जन और देर इज ए स्ट्रॉग सस्पेशन फॉर स्केमिया ओके एंड देर इज लाइक अनस्टेबल एंजाइना और इट इज द पेशेंट इज डायग्नोज विथ एस टी एम आई देन ट्रोप वी नीड टू चेक फॉर द ट्रोपोनिन लेवल इज इंक्रीज और नॉट एंड वी नीड टू मॉनिटर द रिस्क फैक्ट लाइक रिस्क फैक्टर्स इन द पेशेंट्स ओके सो वी नीड टू चेक इफ द वी नीड टू कंसिडर द इन्वेजिव थेरेपी द इन्वेजिव थेरेपी एनजी प्लास्टिज एंड ऑल and uh, if the patient is having chest discomfort if the patient is having ventricular tachycardia hemodynamic instability like like decreased blood flow in the body and the signs of the heart failure okay so we need to start with the invasive therapy if these conditions meet in the patient and the next one is start it uh, start the uh, adjunctive therapy the nitroglycerin needs to be started nitroglycerin i told sublingual spray all this thing and uh, heparin needs to be started for 4000 units or maximum 5000 units in acs patients and consider beta blockers like bisoprolol normally it is used be, uh, beta blockers should be oral only and bisoprolol 2.5 to 5 mg and the next one is uh, clopidogrel anticoagulant 300 to uh, 600 mg okay and the next drug is glycoprotein 2b 3a inhibitor tirofiven iv 25 mcg per kg over less than 5 minutes okay and now coming to the admission like after this uh, after like during the this one is for the emergency department after emergency like even when wherever the patient is in whichever unit we need to start with the adjunctive therapy okay and after admi ad admission in the monitor bed then we need to continue the aspirin heparin the same thing also we need to check for the risk factors of um, this hypertension and if the cholesterol levels are high and all so we need to start with ac inhibitors arbs or the statins hmg coenzyme a reductase inhibitors so the third interpretation being if the patient is normal or uh, no, non diagnostic changes is seen in the st segment or t wave like there is a low or a intermediate uh, intermediate risk of acs then we need to follow uh, further we need to follow the serial cardiac markers like troponin myoglobin and the ckmb and all we need to check and uh, we need to also repeat the ecg okay and if this things is done and it develops one or more one or more complications is seen like clinical high risk features is seen or else like dynamic ecg changes with ischemia or troponin levels are high then further we need to follow the same procedure okay same adjunctive therapy and admission of the patient if the cholesterol levels are high st start with the statins and all and if no then uh, then it is detected as normal uh, sorry abnormal diagnosis okay abnormal diagnosis is done then if no evidence of ischemia or infection by testing the patient can be discharged by follow up anything needs to be explained more thank you